Hey guys, welcome back and thanks for tuning in to my review of the new Steel Wheel Tasso folding knife. We got three and a half inches of M390 steel there for only about 170 bucks. Uh, it's an outstanding knife for the money. And if that's all you wanted to know, you can tune out right now, but I hope you won't because there's lots more to talk about and we're gonna compare it against a bunch of other very cool knives at varying price ranges um, and see how it stacks up. So lots to talk about, but before we get to all that, I'm gonna ask you guys to do me one huge favor. If you enjoy these knife reviews, if you like seeing the content on my channel, I need you to click that notification bell and also subscribe, of course, if you haven't already done so. Reason being, you're just not gonna see any of this stuff. You're gonna blow right past it and YouTube simply will not notify you or suggest my videos to you. Subscribing is not enough, you gotta click the notification bell. So huge favor, please click that uh, so you will know when I upload cool knife reviews like this and lots of other um, gear and gun stuff, which I know you dig. All right, let's get into the Steel Wheel Tasso. So the folks over at Steel Wheel sent this to me before it was released and asked that I kind of obey a simple little embargo, not show pictures of it, not talk about it, not do a video on it until uh, they officially released it at Blade Show. Once that went live, I was able to uh, post some videos, post some photos and all that stuff, which I did over on Facebook and Instagram. By the way, if you're not following me over there, I encourage you to do that. And uh, links are in the description and so forth. But um, at Blade Show, that's kind of where they finally introduced it and gave it the publicity that everybody wanted. Gave it the name, gave it all the, uh, you know, all the interesting details and so forth. And, but again, as I said, I've had this for a little while before that, had it in pocket, got to carry it around a lot, use it a lot, um, EDC it a ton. And I've actually found it to be a very edc knife. It's a little on the thick side for my uh, preferences. And what I'm talking about is this dimension right here. It's a little bit fat for what I typically like to carry, but it's actually quite ergonomic in hand and actually pretty comfortable to carry in pocket. Um, very easy to use in, in all regards. Uh, we can describe the knife for you here a little bit. We'll get into those specs in uh, just a minute. But um, as you see there, we have a little bit of jimping on the spine, which is also a nice rounded and uh, finished spine. So. Everything about the, you know, the, um, I guess just the finishing work of this thing is, is very, very well done. We've got a nice rounded area here. So you can potentially kind of choke up on that with your finger just a little bit, not too much. It's not a lot of room, but you can actually do it. You can kind of get in there and do a little bit finer cutting that way, or just kind of choke back, which is a little more natural feeling, but the jimping works real, really well. Uh, the blade shape is very cool. It's a very kind of classic bowie shape. Um, and you can see that it's almost sog-like in the way that this sort of sweeps up here and then drops down uh, there again. And then a nice little swedge cut out on top as well. All flat ground with, I don't know what the angle of that edge is, but it's pretty easy to maintain. I've had a pretty easy time um, maintaining that edge. M390 doesn't need a lot of maintenance. It'll actually stay pretty nice and sharp, almost razor sharp for quite a while. So from an EDC perspective and standpoint, it's a great steel and it just cuts and cuts and cuts for a long, long time. And that's been my experience as I've been EDCing it. Uh, you can see a, a very contoured handle there, which has got some finger grooves, but not really aggressive or pointy ones. It's just easy and, you know, just kind of melts into your hand in that way. It's, it's really well done um, with, you know, some tapering going on there as well as on the back. So it's well contoured, this G10, not that super textury stuff. Uh, but at the same time, feels good. Doesn't feel like it's gonna slip out of my hand at all. It's not polished to the point where, you know, I feel like it's slippery. I feel like this stays in hand pretty nicely. Cool orange backspacer on it, just for looks. You could have made that, they could have made that black, could have made that any other color, but orange pops and it kind of offsets the whole design in a way that's very attractive. Pocket clip works well as, as well. And we've got about that much sticking out of your pocket, something like that depending on the angle, it would be something like that. Is it reversible, repositionable? No, not at all. You could do some serious modifications to it and get some other aftermarket pocket clip if you really, really wanted to, but it's just tip up, right side only, or right hand only. So 
Uh, aside from that, we've got some thumb studs on there with a bit of a taper to them. I've never minded that. I always feel like that works just fine. Um, and then that's about it. I mean, we can talk about the lock and of course, you know, just the blade shape in general, but we talked about that already. Good, good blade shape, good utility blade shape. So talking about the lock, this is uh, Steel Wheel's own ant lock. They call it the A-N-T lock. And why do they call it ant lock? I'm not quite sure. I think it has to do with sort of like the position of it or whatever. But I wanna to talk to you about sort of how it works uh, from a user's perspective, how to work it, but then also what it actually does. Because I think both of those points are really interesting and they make this a really interesting knife. So I hope to see them use this lock in many, many other uh, knives in the future. Now, according to their test, I'm trying to remember the exact weight that they showed it holding, but it was well over 200 pounds if I remember right, maybe even 300, I'll annotate it. But uh, it, it did really well. Does that compare, you know, well to like some of Cold Steel's, the Triad lock, uh, some of these other really, you know, locks that are known for being extremely tough? I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I want to compare it and say that it's going to be the toughest in the, in the world or anything, or you're like uh, um, Benchmade's Axis Lock or whatever. But it seems to work very well, and the way that it functions is quite interesting in my opinion. So if I can describe what's happening back here, this little strip of metal that you see there, show it to you on the inside, that is the spring. Okay, so it's basically just a big spring bar, big flat piece of metal that acts as a spring. And what that does is it puts tension on this piece right here to hold it in this position. Now when you push these, um, these little sliders up, and listen to this, hear that? That's the, the slider, it kind of it makes a little bit of a, little bit of a sound. So it's a little loosey-goosey as far as the way that it uh, just barely shakes around, but that gives you the, the play that you need in order to operate it smoothly. So anyway, all you do is slide this up like so and watch that lock right there. Yeah, that's it. That's all you do. That unlocks it and that releases the tang. So there's, I can't quite describe it well, but uh, there is a little bit of interaction here. You can see a stop bar as well. And so that's interacting with all of this. I think that's actually pivoting on that. So that's, this kind of moves up and down with that, uh, that spring and sort of stopped by the lock um, switch. But it sort of pivots on this and then interacts with the tang and creates that lock right there. See it drops down like that and then something happens in there somewhere, something drops into something else and that creates the lock. And so all you gotta do is, again, push it up like that. It uh, releases it, closes it up. So again, there's the look at sort of the tang of the blade to give you a sense of how all that works and how those pieces interact. But really interesting design as far as just a new lock type. And so I'm anxious to see more and more of these ant lock knives coming from Steel Wheel. As far as the operation, it's a little bit stickier, a little bit stiffer than I would like, but it's got very, very tight lockup. So there's nothing moving side to side, nothing moving front to back, and there hasn't been in all the work that I've done with it. So good performance overall. And honestly, operating that ant lock, I really like it. And I can see this being a very durable uh, situation because it kind of, it's sort of related to the standard back lock, sort of in the way that these pieces interact, but not really. It's sort of almost like a cross between an access lock and a back lock, if that makes sense. And those of you guys who, pay attention to locks and uh, knife locks. I think you know what I mean. But uh, yeah, super simple. And I really like the fact that you push that back instead of up or down. I've gotten very used to it and I quite like it. But uh, again, it's a little sticky and that's just basically, I think partly the lockup. But this is also kind of how a lot of steel wheels feel. Uh, here is the Gecko Mini. It's got very similar action to it. So I think that's just sort of the standard that they go by as far as the, the pivot motion. They don't want it to be super slick and flying out or anything. They, they just kind of let stuff kind of be firm. That's, I guess, a nice way to put it. But you can sort of flick the, flick the blade out just using the ant lock. So push, it, push that back like so and it usually works. Flick it in, flick it out. It works pretty well. Uh, and so, yeah, um, pretty cool lock, very ergonomic knife. 
Uh, great blade shape, fantastic steel on it, good finishing work on it, I believe it's made in Italy, and uh, just a really high quality knife for probably less money than you would expect to pay for something this nice. In my opinion, that's, that's definitely the case. So that is the Steel Wheel Tasso as far as sort of my uh, review is concerned. But let's get into the specs and sort of end on that. Then we'll do a little comparison with a couple of other knives. So weight first, bring it in the scale. This thing weighs 4.1 ounces, which is roughly what the advertising says. And that's a nice weight. That is a pretty nice weight. And then as far as length, like I said, the blade was about three and a half. Uh, if I can get this ruler out and I'll just kind of uh, look at it myself. I don't know that you'll be able to see it well, but yeah, that's three and a half. And then it comes down to roughly eight inches total, something in that neighborhood, maybe eight, eight and an eighth, something like that. And then as far as the width is concerned, I do happen to have my calipers here. So let's get them switched on and zeroed and our width on that body it's about 0.59 or so and then the blade get that as well about 0.14 let's just confirm that yep about 0.14 yeah so those are the measurements or at least the critical ones uh, for this knife let's get some comparisons going on so there's the steel wheel tasso there in the middle how about the uh, what's this thing called again the rat model one <laughs> We had so many knives over the years. There have been so, so many. That's Rat Model 1, and that's how that stacks up. It's a much less expensive knife in the $40, $50 range, I want to say. Something like that. Something like that. AOS 8 steel. I think this is in the $50 or so dollar range, $40 or $50 dollar range as well. And that's the Spyderco uh, Tenacious. That's tenacious. We've also got a CRKT in here. And that is the home front Ken Onion design uh, from CRKT. We've got the Kershaw Launch 1, an auto knife, and that's how that looks as far as uh, size. That's CPM 154 steel, pretty decent steel. And then lastly, we're going to end on this guy, the Benchmade full-size Griptilian, and you can see kind of how all those things stack up. We're a little uneven on that end over there. Maybe we'll throw one more in. How about Paramilitary 2? Just because. And that's about what we look like for comparisons as far as just sizes. Prices are going to be very, very different and varying, of course. You know what? I forgot to put my patch in frame the entire time. You can still buy those, I think. I have a few of them left. Links are down below. That's the Steel Wheel Tasso, guys. Um, pretty sweet knife, in my opinion. For 170 bucks, and what you get with that M390 steel, which is excellent steel and three and a half inches of it, you're paying not too much money for a heck of a lot of knife. So uh, for, in that regard alone, I heartily recommend it. And as far as quality, as far as how well it EDCs and how well it performs in everyday cutting tasks, I can only recommend it heartily in that regard as well. So Steel Wheel Tasso, I think you'll like it. I definitely do. I'm Late Boy Scout. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all in the next one.